One of the most common issues we hear about and see is the very lack of camel information that camel owners or wannabe owners can get their hands on. It's really scary. The conflicting advice from social media channels after sifting through 50 different comments and opinions and advice, hashtag now officially confused, or the hours spent Googling camel information are only really to end up screen shooting a many cute camel pictures for God knows what purpose. Can you relate? I have personally totally been there and back again and maybe been there again because I didn't learn the first time. So this episode is a little treat for you. So stay tuned to learn about the camel keeping mistakes that even seasoned camel owners make. Hey, my name's Tara from camelconnection.com and I got a little question for you. Who wants to spend thousands of dollars on unnecessary feed for camels, vet fees and supplements? Any show of hands? I'll be the first to admit that sometimes having camels feels more like a drain pipe where all our money goes. Camels can be a big, yes, pun intended, expense sometimes. Let's face it. The conflicting camel information out there, in quotes, out there can make things even more expensive. Hashtag being there again. One of our biggest struggles with our keeping and camel husbandry was the trial and er trial and error situation that we had going on. When we first moved our camels from their natural desert environment into a domestic coastal environment, we were so scared about how the camels would cope in a non-desert environment where we, we had, where we had had them prior. And to be completely honest, there was no expert PDF download, guidance or mentoring from reputable sources that could tell us what we needed to be doing. So... Unfortunately for our camels, it was all a tri- trial and error situation. Luckily, though, the camels were in great condition coming from the desert environment where we had them. So we had some time up our sleeves to become more educated on keeping camels in a domestic environment other than the desert. And let me just say this, that we failed a lot We felt so pissed off at ourselves that we didn't know better info about keeping camels in domestic environments. Sure, we knew how to train them and trek them and, you know, all the in-between stuff. But when it came to caring outside the desert, it was really tricky. So this meant, obviously, for us, a many sleepless nights thinking about what we've done to our camels, which in reality wasn't anything dramatic that was happening to them just yet. It was just that pressing thought that we were effing them up big time. Then a couple of years into having the camels in a domestic environment, um, I'll just add there, we were actually on lease land at the time, but we'll say more on that later. We were putting camels down left right and center that's right we had a many camels death uh well so it felt you know it it just broke your heart it they become your best mates so it was always just a heartbreak all all around and we honestly just wanted to give up we you know give up the whole shot and just think it's not going to work for for where for where we have chosen and need to live Um, So to cut a long and horrible story short, Russ and I were both so frustrated and we felt that there had just had to be a better way. There just had to be. Um, We felt that the camel industry, as tiny as it is, seemed a bit, it seemed a little bit, uh, well, not, I shouldn't say seemed a little bit. It was seriously outdated um, on the knowledge on keeping camels. And most of the advice was back out advice. In other words, we um, the advice was made up that was made up was only relevant to that camel person, person's environment in which they had their camels. So in other words, it was c- completely irrelevant to us. So some of the camel info was so old school that it was really hard to comprehend and, of course, we questioned it. Like those 
old textbooks, for instance. I don't know if you have your hands on one of those, but <laughs> I think I made a I made sense of every second word or so. Um, and I can officially say that I ain't no veterinary science. <laughs> scientists like it was really difficult to read um and that's where most people other people camel people would refer you to it's like i'll read this textbook and like "Eh, it's a textbook um so good mentoring basically was non-existent and it was also outdated um either that or they were in protected hideout bunkers underground because we certainly couldn't find any good reliable information So our solution to this lack of camel keeping info, well, we began doing the research, also known as extensive Googling, to figure out how to manage the camels in a domestic slash non-desert environment. So luckily, as avid learners of new things, we had access to a community of camel people um, who who were and are our students that we could get info on their domestic camel situations and their challenges. So we started forming, you know, a collection of information. So with a bit of smarts, a bit of research and check into research twice and very unofficial, unqualified case studies, we were getting the camel husbandry info that we needed not only for ourselves, but for our entire camel community who were also in dire need for more reliable camel husbandry info too. So after making the decision to go the camel husbandry DIY route, taking care of camels in domestic environments outside of the desert, we created protocols, feeding guides and maintenance routines and it felt like we were finally on the road to better camel well-being. Camels are complicated yet simple when you can understand how their biology works. It's really bloody incredible. Like once you find out, you're like, oh, I roll, of course. (laughs) Of course, that just makes complete sense for a camel. Um, So we knew first and foremost that we could not sit on this camel info that we learn and keep it all to ourselves so we wrote an ebook about it we sold it online you might even have that ebook and people were loving it they called it their bible it was their go-to husbandry info that they could read without being scientists basically and I would also like to add here that our entire camel caring routines completely changed for the better when we invited an Australian camel vet, Margie Bale, who you might have heard on this podcast here, to join forces with us and help with sharing good, reliable camel information. And we finally felt like we were winning. It was just such a fabulous step for us and our and our camel community and students and members. And here we are with a whole pile of experience, good, bad, great, and indifferent, collected information, a camel vet on board, and a webinar presentation that will blow your camel loving mind and leave you feeling more camel confident than ever before. As we said before, we want to share this info with you. So yes, we are holding a free webinar, namely the Camels 101 webinar, where you'll learn how to keep, care for and manage camels. And if you've already got camels and you've already been keeping and caring for them, turn up anyway, guaranteed you'll learn something new. So we've just got so much to share with you on this webinar. We're so excited to give you the camel information you need to create your camels health and well-being routines and plans that will actually last and you can avoid the horrible horrible mistakes mistakes that we made so again you need routines in place you need well-being plans in place and we are going to give that and it's not as dramatic or difficult as it sounds it's pretty much a Uh, fill in the blanks kind of situation so we highly encourage you to sign up and be with us on this camel camels 101 webinar it is free whether you're a camel owner wannabe owner or you're just wanting to know if you can in fact keep camels and what what it's actually going to take We'll be sharing things like what you need to feed a camel, um, aka keeping in mind they're a desert animal, how to keep camels healthy, what kind of setup you need for camels, infrastructure and things like that, and how to solve camel health issues and emergencies. Um, Invaluable information. My God, I wish we had this 
eight years ago so so much oh I feel like crying about it (laughs) but now we get to share this with you so I'll leave on this note just think about it once you've mastered this whole camel husbandry thing and have the knowledge to set up and plan to keep your camel in excellent health or camels in excellent health specific to your location because a spoiler alert here location matters what one husbandry thing will work for one person in one location may not work for another we'll definitely go deeper on that in the webinar so without spending hours and thousands of dollars in specialist vet fees and husbandry mistakes how is this going to change your camel dreams goals or ideas what's going to be possible for you when you know this information So head over and register your place. The seats are limited on, it is a free webinar for the Camels 101 webinar. That's a mouthful. (laughs) Um, You can reserve your seat now over at camelconnection.com forward slash camels 101. And if you're new to this whole webinar thing, yes, it's an online seminar, basically, hence the webinar. So again, head over to camelconnection.com forward slash camels 101 and we'll teach you the three camel keeping mistakes that even seasoned camel owners make. And by the end of the webinar, you'll be feeling more camel confident and I guarantee you're going to learn something new. So we'll see you there again, camelconnection.com forward slash camels 101.